a weaker acid than HF, making her a less acidic hydrogen than HF, okay? All right, thanks, Mom. You're welcome, son. Okay, so let's do this one more time, you guys. Which is going to be more acidic, this hydrogen on the carbon or this hydrogen on the fluorine? On the fluorine, right? Because, hey, it's pulling electrons further away from that H, making it easy for that hydrogen to fall off, right? Okay, so that was electronegativity, you guys. The more electronegative the atom is that's connected to the H, the more acidic that hydrogen is going to be, okay? So, hey, first look for size, then look at electronegativity. The third factor you're going to be looking for is called inductive effects. Inductive effects. And a lot of students get confused by this, you guys. They get it confused with these other two factors. So, hey, let's clear this up right now for you, okay? So, hey, let me go ahead and erase this real quick. Okay, so inductive effects, this does have to do with pulling electrons away from a hydrogen, making it easier for that hydrogen to fall off. But hey, you guys, for inductive effects, you are going to be comparing the electronegativity of atoms that are not directly connected to the hydrogen that's going to fall off, okay? What I'm saying is, is that when we did size and electronegativity, we were comparing atoms that were directly connected to the hydrogen that was going to fall off. Inductive effects, we're going to be looking at two atoms that are not directly connected to the hydrogen that's going to fall off. And you'll see this in just a second, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead and just take uh, these two compounds and we can compare these. Let's take CH2 connected to a CH2 connected to a C double bond O, OH. And uh, let's do the same exact thing for this one. CH2, CH2, C double bonded to an O connected to an OH. Okay, and let's put a fluorine on this one and let's put an iodine on this one. So do you guys agree the only thing that differs between these two compounds is that this one has a fluorine and this one has an iodine? Okay, cool. Let's see how this plays a role in the acidity of our hydrogens, okay? Okay, so awesome, you guys. Your professor can ask you, which one, of these comp oh, which one of these compounds is more acidic? This one with the fluorine or this one with the iodine? Which one has a hydrogen that's more willing to fall off? And the hydrogen in question is this hydrogen right here versus this hydrogen right here. Which one is more willing to fall off? Which one is easier to fall off? That's going to be the stronger acid, okay? And this is a great question because it catches a lot of people, okay? Because, hey, your professor knows that a lot of people don't really understand these stabilizing factors. They just try to go through it and they're like, okay, size, yeah, electronegativity, inductive, and uh, they don't really understand what's going on, okay? So this generates a lot of sucker responses, okay? So if he asks you this question, which one's gonna be more acidic, this hydrogen on this compound with iodine or this hydrogen on this compound with fluorine? The sucker answer is people are like, okay, well, the only difference between this compound and this compound is that, hey, this one has fluorine and this one has iodine, and hey, the bigger you are, the more acidic you are, right? So hey, iodine is more acidic than fluorine. So all right, yeah, this hydrogen is going to be more acidic, right? And eh, that is so wrong, okay? Because guess, guess why this is the sucker, sucker answer? Guess why this is wrong? Because size isn't an issue here, you guys. Let me show you when size was an issue. Okay, so remember we had HF and we had HI. And these turned into their conjugate bases, right? So HF turned into F minus, and HI turned into I minus, right, you guys? And we said that the bigger you are, the more stable you are. Why was that the case? Because, hey, the bigger you are, the better you are at dispersing charge. So fluorine was this small, iodine was this big. So the bigger you are, the more you can disperse this negative charge, and you can neutralize that charge, right? That's why HI was more acidic than HF, because the conjugate base was more able to disperse the charge because it was bigger, right? Check it out what's happening. Check out what's happening here because, hey, this hydrogen, these hydrogens are directly connected to the atoms that we're comparing. This hydrogen is directly connected to this fluorine. This hydrogen is directly connected to this iodine, okay? This is why size was an issue here because the negative charge that occurred when this turned into the conjugate base went on to the atoms that we were comparing. Check out what's happening in this example, okay? 
this hydrogen is now not on the atoms that we're comparing. We're comparing the only difference between these two compounds is this one has fluorine, this one has iodine, okay? And the hydrogen is not directly connected to those, right? Okay, so check out why size isn't an issue because, hey, if you turn this into its conjugate base, you're gonna get CH2, CH2, C double bond O, O minus, because the H is gonna fall off, right? You're, for this one conjugate base, you're gonna get CH2, CH2, C double bond O, O minus, okay? And don't forget, you have a fluorine on this one, fluorine on this one, and an iodine on this one. Okay, so why is size not an issue here? Well, check it out. The negative charge went on to oxygen in both of these, right? So hey, you can't say, hey, oxygen is bigger than oxygen. So hey, oxygen is better at dispersing charge than this oxygen, right? You can't say that. Neither of these are bigger than each other. They're both the same, they're both the same size. So it doesn't have anything to do with size in this case because hey, they're the same, right? So you can't use size as the basis of comparison here because they're both the same, right? So what's actually going on here, you guys? Inductive effects is making one of these more acidic than the other. Let's see how. Okay, so we said that hydrogens are more acidic. They're easier to fall off if their electrons are being taken away from them, right? Like with my mom, the more you took electrons away from her, then the easier it was for her to fall off. The same thing is true in this case, you guys. So what's pulling the electrons away from this hydrogen in this case? We've got electronegative atoms, we've got fluorine and iodine, right? So we've got fluorine that's pulling electrons away from this hydrogen in this direction, right? We've also got iodine pulling electrons away from this hydrogen in this direction. But guess what? Fluorine is like twice as electronegative as iodine. He's gonna be pulling electrons twice as hard away from this hydrogen than iodine is. What this means is, you guys, if, if these two are pulling electrons away from this hydrogen, if you were to look where these electrons actually were, if you actually drew out these electrons, you'd notice that the electrons in this case would be a lot closer to oxygen because these electrons are being pulled away from hydrogen in this direction, right? The same thing is true in this case, except guess what? Iodine is a lot less electronegative than, I than fluorine, so it's gonna be pulling electrons less strongly. So it's still gonna be pulling electrons towards the oxygen, closer to the oxygen, but hey, it's gonna be pulling a lot less than fluorine, okay? So fluorine has the biggest effect here because it's the most electronegative. It's pulling electrons this way away from hydrogen, the farthest away from hydrogen in comparison to this one, okay? So hey, inductive effects, this is talking about the electronegativity of atoms that are not directly connected to the hydrogen that's falling off, okay? So hey, this fluorine, he's pulling electrons away from this hydrogen, making it easy for him to fall off. The same thing is true in this case, iodine is also pulling electrons away from that hydrogen, making it easier for, for it to fall off. But who's pulling harder on those electrons? Who's pulling those electrons farther away from the hydrogen? The fluorine, right? So hey, that's why this one, this hydrogen is more acidic than this one. It's easier for this one to fall off than this one, okay? Okay, so make sure you understand this, you guys, because when I was taking this class, I always fell for the sucker answer. I was always like, hey, iodine, that's bigger, so that hydrogen's gonna be more acidic, okay? But hey, no, 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 you guys, size isn't the issue here because the hydrogen isn't directly connected to the atoms of comparison. You're comparing iodine here versus fluorine here, and they're not directly connected, okay? Okay, so let me erase this and I'll give you one more example involving inductive effects. All right, so let me put up two more compounds here to illustrate one more thing about inductive effects, okay? So let's take CH2, 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 C double bond O, connected to an OH, and let's put a fluorine on this guy right here. And let's compare this to, let's say CH3, CH2, CH, C double bond O, OH, that's an H right there, sorry. And let's put a fluorine right here on this guy. 
Okay, and this is another great comparison question, you guys, because your professor can ask you again, hey, which one of these compounds is more acidic? This one on the right or this one on the left? Which one is gonna have the hydrogen that's easier to fall off? And once again, you guys, we're comparing this hydrogen versus this hydrogen, okay? And this is great because a lot of people, when they look at these two, they're like, uh-oh, both of these have fluorines on them. They look really, really similar, okay? And yes, you guys, they are very similar. These both have fluorines pulling electrons away from the hydrogen. But the question is, is one pulling harder than another? Is one pulling electrons further away from a hydrogen than another, okay? And the answer is, yes, it is. Because for inductive effects, the closer the electronegative atom is to the hydrogen, the more effect it's going to have. The further away the electronegative atom, the less effect. So the closer, the stronger effect, the further away it is, the less effect it's going to have. So hey, look if you look at these two, you guys, this fluorine is one, two, three, four carbons away from that hydrogen. This fluorine is only one, two carbons away. This fluorine is a lot closer to this hydrogen than this fluorine is, okay? Meaning that both of these are pulling electrons away from the hydrogen, right? Like this and like this, both pulling electrons away from the hydrogen, but guess which one's going to be pulling harder? This one where the fluorine is a lot closer, this fluorine is a lot closer to that hydrogen, so it's gonna have a lot more effect. It's gonna have like maybe three times, I don't know, it's not an exact thing, but it's gonna have a lot more effect, you guys. Meaning that if you drew out these electrons between this oxygen and this hydrogen, this 